My name is Don Peavy. I was born and raised in Buford, Georgia, and got the scars to prove it. <laughs> Went to school there. Uh, my parents were, were raised in the Buford, Gwinnett County area. And uh, my father was a clerk of court of Gwinnett County for uh, 20 years, from 1960 to 1984. And so I kind of got spoiled uh, or, 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 <clears throat> or got a taste, you might say, of, uh, of the politics uh, in the family uh, through, uh, through my father being a clerk of the court of Gwinnett uh, County. So your family has been in politics for years. You grew up with it. Yeah. Was that kind of what inspired you to run for the Senate seat? Well, I, I, was I was 12 years old when he was elected in 1960. And wasn't long before I got to know the sheriff and the judge and the district attorney and all the other uh, office holders in the, in the courthouse. And the courthouse was much smaller than what we have now in Gwinnett County. And so uh, I, I, I felt like I was a, a part of what was going on in the county, even though I was just a boy. And that, uh, you know, perhaps inspired me to, to uh, pursue politics at some point. I can't say that would be it alone, but... Uh, <laughs> I had, I had a taste of it, I guess you might say, at that time. Do you want to touch about some of your major platforms that you had as a senator? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I, was, uh, I had some legislation that uh, I sponsored uh, regarding uh, the informed consent law, uh, wherein uh, it required uh, physicians to give uh, patients information as to any uh, evasive uh, procedures they would do or any surgery they would do as to the, the possible uh, negative effects that could, could occur. And uh, we couldn't get that through to begin with. Uh, the uh, medical uh, lobby was opposed to it. And uh, we could barely get it out of committee the first, the first year. So we came back the next year. And in between the time off, one of the uh, members of the uh, Senate had died on the, uh, on the uh, hospital bed when they were doing a, an evasive uh, uh, procedure. And uh, uh, when that happened, his wife was upset because they didn't have any information. If they know it was risky, they would, probably wouldn't have done it. And so the, the next thing that happened in the next session, everybody supported it and it passed overwhelmingly, you know. So that's one of the pieces of legislation that I was, I was glad to be able to get through. What are your proudest pieces of work that you, you think have truly affected Georgia's policies and are still being used today? Well, I had a, I had a bill, well, I had a, I had a bill, a piece of legislation that uh, prohibited the use of the polygraph, the lie detector test, during uh, 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 employment situations for hiring purposes. And it's because uh, people would call the polygraph a lie detector, but it was not a lie detector. And there was a lot of people not being hired based upon misinformation about the, the polygraph. Polygraph measures three things, your perspiration, respiration, and, and heart rate. And there are a lot of things that, uh, other than lying, that can make those uh, physiological uh, parts of your body to, to react and, and their own measurements in, in, the, in the polygraph. They, they, they monitor that kind of re reaction and make a decision as to who's lying and who's not. And so finally we got that stopped as far as uh, use in employment purposes. During that time, was it really common to use Oh, yes, tests? yes. I mean, they would... But what type of employment? Any, any type of employment, uh, uh, you know. Uh, whether it was uh, uh, law enforcement or whether it was uh, um, for stores or, or clerks or whatever, you know. It's, and uh, people uh, could not get jobs if, uh, if the polygraph operator said, you're lying. Wow. And they were, take, they were taking that as the gospel almost, you know. And there were lots of stories that, uh, uh, that we, we presented on that. There were expert testimony uh, that, uh, in both, on both sides of the issue but uh, we were able to get that through eventually, too. What are some of the most memorable people from your time in office? Well, I sat next to this fellow named uh, Nathan Deal for eight years. <laughs> if, I known, if I'd known he was going to be governor, I'd have treated him a lot better, I'm sure. <laughs> he sounds familiar. <laughs> yes, we, uh, we sat together, and we, we became good friends. And uh, Where did you sit? 
the table? I sat on the next to the last row, right next next to him. Oh, wow. And uh, and we discussed all the pieces of legislation. And uh, uh, he had mentioned to me at one point in time he was he was thinking about becoming trying to be governor. You know. Really? Yeah. He asked me if, if I was thinking about anything like that. I said no. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is all the follow political. I won't. I believe. <laughs> But uh, we get along, got along real well, and uh, I'm, I'm proud that he became governor. Uh, we had some good people in the Senate back then that were memorable people, and inclu including Roy Barnes was in our uh, this this chamber at that time too, and and, uh, and of course became governor too. So, what are some memorable moments for you? Well, we had an interesting situation. You might get uh, find this humorous. There was a. Uh, a bill called the uh, the head of the household, and uh, I forget who who sponsored it, but they had had a, had a lot of people that was in, involved in the, in the head of the household. They wanted man to be the head of the household, and wanted that to be the law. Okay. And it was a, a when the the uh, e, uh, the little ERA uh, uh, the uh, 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 head of the household. And it was the e Equal Rights Amendment for women, basically what it was. So we were trying to, to keep that from, from happening. And so we, we finally got it out of committee and got it uh, through the road, uh, Rules Committee to hear it on the last day of the, of the session. And uh, so they put it on, on the, on the, on the uh, list to, to, to be passed on the, or to be voted on on the, the uh, last day of the session. Well, early on that day, it, we voted on it and it got defeated. Mm -hmm. And I, I moved for reconsideration, which put it back to the bottom of the uh, list. And we had to wait until the very last part of the day before it ever got back on the, on the, on the, on the position that you would, you would vote for. But as is custom on the last night of the session, all the uh, husbands, and there weren't many women in, in, the, in the Senate then, all the husbands' wives would come in and sit on the front rows and uh, hear the, 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 the session that day. And so uh, by the time in the late day when all the, the women were there, they had heard about their husbands having voted against the uh, <laughs> head of the household bill. <laughs> so we had a, a, another... Uh, uh, debate about it, and it passed overwhelmingly. Because <laughs> <laughs> the wives were watching. <laughs> they got on to their husbands about it. <laughs> so that was a that was a lot of fun in the, in, a, in the session, and I, it was something that I think needed to be done at the time as well. Because that's many? what my wife told me. <laughs> <laughs> How many women were in the Senate at that time? I would say it's been so long ago, but it was I'd say a handful, six or eight at the most, you know. Mm -hmm an attorney now, you're using some of the pieces of legislation that you passed, and so what are your proudest ones? Well, the, some of the ones I've already, I've already mentioned, uh, but uh, we, we also had uh, legislation uh, that, uh, uh, <clears throat> wherein there was a, a debate about whether or not military weapons should be uh, available to the general public. And I, I put a, a bill in prohibiting that. Uh, having been a police officer uh, for a number of years, uh, and as, as a police officer back in the uh, 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 early 70s, uh, we still had revolvers. And, uh, but now, in the 80s, when I was in, in the Senate, uh, they were having these street sweepers and machine guns and and, and, and uh, military style weapons that were anybody could get. And there were a lot of people being killed, a lot of police officers being shot by that. And so friends of mine in law enforcement asked me to put in a bill that would limit that. And uh, we, uh, we had, had big debates on that and, and it didn't pass the first time, it didn't pass. I think it's uh, gone, it's passed since then. There is some, some limitations on that now, but uh, that was a big issue back then, and the NRA and, and people who were on the other side were, were fighting it, you know. What was Georgia like during your time in office? What was it like? <laughs> how, has, how has it grown or oh, changed? Oh, well, since? it's gone from the time I was a boy, it was a, it was a rural area. As a matter of fact, Gwinnett County, when I was a boy, had about 60,000 people. 
and, and now I'm 63 years old, there's 800,000 people in Gwinnett County, which is the second largest county in the state. So uh, the whole state was, was more rural than it is now. Uh, the only urban area, particularly, of any, of any great size was Atlanta. And, um, and so most of the legislat legislation came from people throughout the more rural areas. And they had more votes than the, than the city folks did. So those were, were issues that, uh, that were debated oft often and compromised. Uh, some people could get what they wanted in the, in the city from, from votes for those, from those out in the country. And then if they would uh, pass back the, the favor back to the country folks for the, for the, for the uh, uh, legislation they wanted, you know. So we, we did get along pretty well. We compromised most of the time, but not always. Sometimes we had to get the women up to, to show us how to, how, to, how to get things straightened out that we couldn't do by ourselves. The state of Georgia was still very democratic, and it transitioned into the Republican leadership. How was that transition for you serving as an elected official? Well, I, I, was, I was a Democrat, and, and my father had been a Democrat when he was clerk of court, so it was, in, it was pretty, pretty regular. Most people were Democrats in, in those days. But during the 80s, was when Ronald Reagan was elected, and uh, those, those uh, things began to move uh, from, from Democratic to, to Republican uh, you know, support. And uh, uh, I, I got beat in, uh, in 1990. I was there from 82 to 90. I got beat, and, uh, and I, all the good politicians that got, got beat who were Democrats switched over to the Republicans <laughs> and, and they became good, they were good politicians and, and, uh, and, and, and stayed in office. Uh, but I wasn't a good politician, I just wanted to be a good legislator and uh, I'd, I'd done most of the things that I wanted done. So I, didn't, I never did run again for anything, and, and, uh, but I enjoyed my eight years and uh, enjoy, enjoyed being with the people I was with in the session. What was the best part about being a senator? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just know, knowing people that, I, uh, that I've stayed in touch with ever since, uh, uh, knowing Mr. Barnes and, 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 being, and being with him and even having some cases with him, uh, knowing Mr. Deal, uh, Governor Deal, and uh, his, his son, who's a Superior Court judge in, in Hall County, who I've been, been before numerous times, and knowing those people, otherwise I wouldn't have known them personally, and, uh, and uh, knowing the governor. Uh, uh, Joe Frank Harris then, and uh, Zell Miller later on, who was who was then the uh, uh, president of the Senate, the, the lieutenant governor, and he became governor, uh, and knowing them and working with them on their issues as well. And what would conversely be the worst part about being a senator? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asking for your vote that you couldn't give to it. <laughs> you, could, you couldn't give them an answer for it. And, uh, are trying to get a vote that you couldn't get from somebody else that you needed. Those were the difficult, and, uh, and, and, and you tried to stay focused on the, on the issue and the language of the, issue, of the, of the, of the bill, but uh, when that didn't work, you had to try to swap out. Uh, well, I'll vote for your piece of legislation on this other issue if you'll vote for me on this one, you know. So there's, there's uh, ways that you could try to get uh, additional uh, votes if you couldn't get them. And, uh, some of them wasn't, wasn't the prettiest ways, so, so to speak, <laughs> or the most logical ways. And in 1986, when you were running again, there was a voting fraud mistake. And tell me about that incident and what was it like for you? I, got I, I was beaten by eight vote, votes, and uh, we had a recount. And I won by, I liked 18 votes after the recount. I, I might, might not be exactly right on the numbers right there, but uh, we, we won it on recount. And uh, they found that, uh, uh, there was an investigation, and they found that some of the ballots had been uh, had not been provided to to be counted, and uh, they did an investigation and found some of that, and, and we got a few more votes when they found that, you know. But uh, but it's uh, it's documented, and it's, it's an interesting read. <laughs> but the the voting fraud incident in 1986 that you went through, how did you feel? Did it make you jaded about the process? Well, yeah, yeah. That it was electronic then. That's one of the first times we had electronic voting, and so uh, you didn't have a you didn't have a paper ballot that you could go to and count. It's, now, I represented 
two-thirds of Gwinnett and all of Barra County. Barra County had paper ballots, so we had something that we could go back to and count and, and find out if, if it was accurate or not, and, and, and their counting was right both, both times, the first time and the last time. But in Gwinnett County, you had uh, electronic voting that we have now, and uh, you just push a button and the, and the same number would come up, you know. But then the, the, the number of ballots were not being, were not being consistent. It, what, the what, it, paper was getting misplaced or, or, or whatever, you know. And it was the, uh, it was the first time uh, uh, that I'd heard the, the story about Chad's. That was later became in the in the U.S. Uh, co uh, not Congress, but uh, uh, running for uh, president. Uh, there were Chad's that were being messed up in the in the recount during the during the machines, and it would affect whether or not your vote got counted like you wanted it to do, or like the child, Chad had been left in there or, or or been blown over to another side of the, uh, of, the of the ballot. And so that was the first time that that was. Uh, that was noted in, in any documentation, and uh, I got a big chuckle some years later with, uh, with uh, when it happened in the president's races. So what was uh, your relationship with your constituents like? Well, uh, I had a good relationship with all of the uh, Democrats, <laughs> but they were getting old and moving on, <laughs> and the Republicans were moving in, new people from, from all over, from Ohio, and my wife used to say, what. Well, Everybody's moving down here from Ohio. We need to move up there. <laughs> it's getting too crowded down here. But, uh, but a lot of people moved in, and it, it, changed, uh, it changed the South and, and, and even the Atlanta area uh, greatly, and, and, and much of it for the better, but not all of it. <laughs> what advice would you give to the politicians sitting in here now? Be a good legislature better than you are a good politician. <laughs> you, get, you do your politic, politician, politic work, uh, in getting elected, and then you have to put that behind you and, and do the legislative work, which requires uh, the studying of the law and the impact of, of the legislation. What, what is, will the intended impact of it be what you want, or will it be misinterpreted? Uh, that was what I always enjoyed was the language of the law, and uh, I was able to, to amend some languages that were being uh, uh, Posed uh, with a, just a few words, you know, <laughs> that, that that clarified it or, or changed it. Sometimes making the author happy, and sometimes making the author unhappy, you know. But I was uh, I was interested in the in the language of the law at the time, and uh, and uh, there was like wasn't many lawyers in the Senate then. I think there was nine nine of us. And if uh, if if you had uh, good relationships with with the non lawyers. Uh, uh, they would come and ask you help in, 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 in working their legislation in, in the language of it. And that would give you more power than the average person uh, in the Senate and give you more influence if they, if they trusted you and, you and you were able to uh, 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 show them your, the way, so to speak, from your education. Uh, you could make good friends with them and, and, and good allies on, on legislation. And so that's what I enjoyed doing and I, I tried my best to uh, to accommodate people who, who ask for my help. How has the political atmosphere changed from when you were in office till now? Oh, it seems to be much more bitter now, especially on the national scene. Uh, when, when, when we were through with, uh, with, the, with the session, uh, we'd go out and play cards or, or have a beer with uh, Republicans and Democrats together, and we were, were much more friendly to each other than and now, now we could be pretty bitter in, in, the, in the chamber here when we were doing our business, but uh, after it was over with, after the ball game was over with, so to speak, you can go out and have, have a beer with you, with people you'd play. If you, if you, if you, if you catch the, uh, the, the analogy with sports, you know, I mean, you, you fight hard on the field for, what you, for your team, for what you were pursuing, but when it's over with, uh, Go over and shake hands with the, with the opponents, whether you win or, win or lose, and uh, you'll see them again sometime. Any future political aspirations? No, <laughs> but, uh, but I've have, I have a lot of friends that I've, I've met and who have worked with me in, uh, in my office, who have run for office and, 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 and are now serving. So I, I still stay, stay up with it and, and keep in touch with them. And 
Uh, and I enjoyed my days here, and I've, I've enjoyed it since I've been out. <laughs>